In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the healing of Mildred Reckla, Amy Reckla, Lucas Balangit, Eric Lopez, Norma Gaspar, Felicissima Castro, Kelly Tapacho, Zaid Zappo, Michael Mello, Vernon Pingol, Robert Tardichila, Perlina Quattrochalki, Dennis Mark Rogers, Catherine Thompson, Teresa Oligario, Eveline Richard, Benam Fernandez, Chris Jane Gabon, Benjamin DeMello Kearns, Norman George Pitcher, Matthew Vacari, Isabel Martins, Aurelia Delara, Olivia C., Joel Natalie Meyer, Chara Popel, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Kiana Tran, Carmen Pace, Jason Aguiar, Michael A., Gloria Matthias, Gina Bellaton, Maria Morales, Mendelin Lee, Agnes Wu, Menino Timoto, Jose Duarte. For the intentions of Mad Soma and family, Natalie Meyer and family, Eva Bartolo and family, Benny Garces, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, Catherine Thompson and family, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Juvencio Batera, John, and all souls in purgatory, we pray. Unworthy servants that we are, O Lord, grieved by the guilt of our deeds, we pray that you may gladden us by the saving of advent of your only begotten Son. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God's second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Jerusalem, Sing, O barren one who did not bear burst into song and shout you who did not who have not been in labor for the children of the desolate women will be more than the children of her that is married says the lord enlarge the sight of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out do not hold back lengthen your cords and strengthen your states for you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Do not be discouraged, for you will not suffer disgrace. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the disgrace of your widowhood. You will remember no more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me. Just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth, so I have been sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I, have pra I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. 
Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my morning into dancing and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All people shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When John the Baptist's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who put on fine clothing and live in luxury are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people who heard this, including the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God, because he had been baptized with John's baptism. But by refusing to be baptized by him, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected God's purpose for themselves. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. As I've been mentioning the last couple of days, it is important that we have a plan for Advent, each and every one of us, at a personal level, family level, parish level, country level, world level. We need to have a plan so that there is significance in Advent, in preparation for Christmas, so that people grow in a deeper awareness of why this is important, what makes this relevant, and ultimately not to be like the scribes and Pharisees, the lawyers, those that ignored our Lord and were not able to see. We are called to see, and ultimately we, upon seeing, have an obligation to help others see. It is called evangelization. And I've been pushing upon you the title God-man um, because it is a title that people don't use, are not familiar with, and ultimately have forgotten. And once you forget God-man, you forget, as I've mentioned, everything, the beginning of fixing the sin of Adam, God's love, why he came, the impact of his coming. And ultimately, people have focused, and this is where you have to be incredibly careful, because when people criticize our faith today, they typically criticize the church. And we have to be very careful to recognize we are called to evangelize to the Lord, not to the church. And so when you're dealing with this new generation, um, many of them uh, in dealing with the indigenous issue or with the scandal issue or with whatever issue, um, we have to be very careful because there is a danger that we go toward talking more about the Catholic Church than we do about Jesus Christ, the God-man. And all of a sudden, the emphasis is on come to Mass in the Church. Come to the Church. That's Christmas, when the family comes to Church. Now, of course, there is a link, but we have to make sure that people understand. We aren't promoting, presenting. The salvation is not by the Church. It is by the Lord. And we need to make sure that it's clear to people what we mean by that. Because there have been times where that line has been blurred and people are confused. 
and especially now where, you know, when you mention the word Catholic, it doesn't have the best reputation. It's not a buzzword um, like Apple computers, um, a Tesla, um, like we aren't seen as avant-garde. We are, uh, we are not seen as the next thing. We are seen as something in the past, historical. And so we need to be very careful, especially when dealing with our young people, when they are critical of the faith, they usually mean the church. So keep them aware that it is ultimately the Lord that sets us free, that came for us, not the church. The church played its role, and I've been trying to make this clear to you in terms of establishing the place of the God-man, teaching the God-man, helping people to understand, as we do in the Nicene Creed because of St. Nicholas, the God-man. But we need to be very careful when we're dealing with our young people. I'm looking very forward to meeting the 19 to 39 year olds um, on Friday. I'm curious about what issues will come up and how they will interact with myself and Vlad and each other. I don't know if these are churchgoers, not churchgoers. Again, one has to be very flexible in dealing with this population. One has to be very adapt, adept to adapting, essentially, um, to what their needs are for information and to let them explain and express themselves. This is not a time where we lecture, but we should be doing a lot of listening as a church. We should be doing a lot of listening in terms of why they are not coming, what is upsetting them, um, what it is about our religion that does not appeal to them. Um, we need to listen very carefully and ultimately stay Christ-centered, stay focused on our Lord Jesus Christ when we speak to them. They may divert us into another direction, gender rights, gay rights, euthanasia rights, abortion rights. They may divert us. Our focus has to be on the Lord and the identity as Christians needs to be emphasized with them so that they understand what it is that roots them and that gives them their identity, their foundation of rock. Because many of them are anxious, uncertain, insecure. They say that to me often. And we need to show them the gift that the Lord has given us of being our rock, of security, of enabling us to keep building on that foundation. But the only way we can do that is if we recognize him as the rock and ultimately present that to the young people that way. Not the church as the rock. The church is not the rock. Um, so we need to be very careful when we listen to them, how they are speaking, of what they are choosing to speak. And we have to always focus on the Lord, emphasize the Lord. This is what we do during Advent in preparation for Christmas. So again, have a plan. You know, when people will be coming to your home um, this Christmas, when you'll be getting visitors, when you'll be speaking to people uh, about our faith, have a plan. But make sure that you're listening to them. Don't react. Don't get angry. Don't get upset um, that they may not be church-going, mass-attending Catholics. Uh, those represent a vast minority of our overall Catholic population. So we need to empathize and focus on what we need to focus upon with them, creating a foundation which is ultimately the Lord Jesus Christ.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. And this is the one of the who shared the divinity of Christ, whom the soul is shared in the heart of humanity. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we may gather from among the gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer, exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, and all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Tom Collins, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, in a special way, Jovencio Batera, John, all souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to, to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring you to everlasting life. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amidst passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you all. Have a lovely day.